be worth the time you invest, all right? Thanks, John. Praise the Lord. What a great morning already. And I want to say hello to you, church. I love you. And uh, the Lord Jesus loves you. And it's in the name of the Lord that we as God's people can be right here to worship him in spirit and in truth. My goodness, Brother Brad, worship team, I was so blessed by what God did uh, just through the worship. And we're not done worshiping yet. The Bible commands us. To worship him in spirit, say it with me, and in, and we're going to have the opportunity to do that this morning, but I am so delighted that I get to worship with you right here in Nevo, North Carolina. I am probably the weirdest uh, guy ever who grew up in the city from California, transplanted to Arkansas, and then moved to the other side of the world, to Singapore. But if you were asked to ask me how I would dream of living my life, give me five acres in a country somewhere in the mountains and give me five goats, five chickens, that's all I want and I am a happy man. But uh, I am, I'm just delighted. I wanna say thank you to this church uh, for so many things. Um, but thank you for taking care of my son over the last two weeks. He went to uh, the teen camp with this church, and he had a blast, and then he stayed here and hung out with Pastor Bob and his family. We went by to pick him up on Thursday and said, Caleb, would you like to come home now? And he said, no, I don't. <laughs> and I said to him, son, you do not look like a Ritter. You look like one of us. And he, you know, you have to remind your son that. And to, uh, when I came to, to Nebo, he, two weeks later, he outgrew me. And so he was so excited and so thrilled about that. He said, Dad, look, have I, have I grown? And he was so standing upright and everything. And I looked at him. I said, listen, buddy, don't be so proud of that. You're measuring up to me. <laughs> I mean, that's cool that you're taller and everything, but... You know, me and Danny DeVito, we ain't growing anymore. <laughs> then we're going to grow. But uh, I'm so grateful for this church for taking care of them. And thank you for loving my family. My goodness, the messages that I get from this church, the love that I get from this church, you are, you are bombarding heaven on my behalf. And praise Jesus that I have a church family right here in Nebo, North Carolina that lifts us up in prayer. Melissa McKinney will often t send me a text message. Shanta, my alarm just went off and I'll, I, we just prayed for you and your family. And what an encouragement that is. And so many other folks from right here that have encouraged us along the way. And we're so, so privileged to, to be a part of this church family in that way. Well, I want to say this. I want to say, uh, I've already expressed it to you, but on behalf of the church in Singapore, we love you. We thank God for you. What God is doing in Singapore and around the world, we're just thrilled. And you folks right here in the mountains of North Carolina have taken what Nebo Crossing is and the spirit of Nebo Crossing, and you are spreading the love of Jesus all over the world. And because of that, I'm here today, while today is a July 4th weekend holiday, if you will, we get to celebrate freedom. We get to celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ. We get to celebrate God's people, and we get to celebrate, the Bible tells us, that if we are free, we're not just free, but we are free indeed. And we're grateful for the country that we have of America. I'm grateful. Uh, one person came up to me, and he said to me with a big old smile on his face, um, he said, welcome home. I about had a fit because you don't ever say that to a missionary because that's such a significant meaning because when you're back home in the United States, you just have a love for your country and I'm wearing my red, white, and blue today. I've got my happy socks on uh, because I want to make sure that, that uh, this Asian American is getting to celebrate uh, the freedom that we have in uh, in this country and the freedom that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. So we are free indeed. Hallelujah. Well, um, I want to introduce you to a friend of mine, Peter and Abby. Would you mind standing up for just a moment? And this is Peter and Abby Hamilton. They have five children and they're all youngins and they're here with me. They're traveling the States with me for another two weeks. And uh, they have been missionaries in China for the last 10 years. 
and now they're back here in the States, and just because of various circumstances, now they're actually needing to raise funds uh, for the ministry that God has called them, and they're a part of our ministry of SEAL Network. SEAL stands for Spiritually Equipping Asian Leaders, and that's our desire to be able to train national leaderships to carry the gospel into the uttermost parts of uh, the 1040 window, and we have seen God move in amazing ways, but I'm so proud of Peter and Abby. They have such a sweet spirit. I get to know them while they're here. They're only here this weekend, but I get to know them while they're here and uh, pray for them. They have prayer cards and a little banner in the back, and it would encourage them in the Lord if you can do that, and that would be a blessing. Well, the video that you're going to see is a video of our ministry in Nepal. And what's significant about what God did in Nepal, God opened the door for our ministry to go over there. And uh, about once a month, God gives us the opportunity to go into different countries and, and serve and preach and share the gospel. And uh, we went into the country of Nepal about four and a half years ago. And steadily, God has just been doing some amazing things in Nepal. About this time last year, uh, the group here from from Nebo Crossing was supposed to go over to Singapore and to uh, to to Nepal and because of Les's home going service we had to postpone that trip and what you're about to see is what happened on that trip so a little bit it's in tribute to Les Green and his memories and what God did here and how while we were able to honor him here and remember him here, God left pastor here. He needed to be here to be able to, to serve his family and to, to be able to mourn and weep and cry and rejoice in the life of less. We were rejoicing in what God was doing, and it was so neat because part of the dedication service, there's a plaque. As soon as you walk into the building that you're about to see, it says this building was uh, donated and served by the people of Nebo Crossing Church. You have a part in what God did in Nepal and, of course, around the world. So I want you to enjoy this video and know that uh, your prayers, your support is not underappreciated. I hope that I can overappreciate your love and your prayers for us. And so enjoy this video with me, would you? In just a few short minutes, we'll be hosting hundreds of people that will be gathered right here in Duran. This is our tent, temporary structure that we put up, and we're doing our grand opening for the SEAL Leadership Training Center here in Nepal. I want to thank everyone for your love, for your prayer, for your support, and you pray for us as in just a few short minutes, pastors are actually already arriving, and many of them will be coming down from the villages all throughout Nepal. exciting day for SEAL and this is the official ribbon cutting ceremony. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, Jamie Singh. I want to thank all my friends that are here for the grand opening of our leadership center. This is a dream come true. The opening of this leadership center is the opening of doors of opportunity for us to serve our King. Today begins the day of greater things for Nepal. And may our Lord Jesus Christ receive all the glory. All over the room, men, ladies, this is the hope of Nepal. This is the vision of SEAL. This is the love of God. That men and ladies would say, God, I want to be that voice. I want to receive the Holy Spirit. I want to declare your good news among the nations. I do not want to keep it to myself. Father, we pray that there will be a fresh anointing on your people so we can go out to the mountains and to the villages and to the cities 
पनि जहाँ पहाडमा शहरमा जहाँ जहाँ जान्छौ अनि तपाईको महान सन्देशलाई बाँड्छौ तपाईको जन्मको निम्ति प्रार्थना गर्दछु तपाईले उनीहरूलाई शक्तिशाली बनाउनुहोस् उनीहरूको आवश्यकतालाई पुरा गर्नुहोस् अनि उनीहरूको सहयोगको निम्ति उहाँहरूलाई सहायता गर्नुहोस् अनि उहाँहरूको परिवार र शिवकालीमा प्रशस्त आशीर्वाद अनि सहायक गर्नुहोस् यसको नाममा रहनको लागि हामी तपाईँलाई स्वीकारछौँ यसको नाम Amen. And all over the world, God's people, whether it's in North Carolina, whether it's in Arkansas, whether it is in Nepal or Singapore, God's people are lifting up uh, his name most high. Every single one of the worship songs today was all about the name of Jesus. And when you declare the name of Jesus, it is the name that's above all names. And he is right here in our very midst. When two or more people are gathered in my name there i am in the midst of them also we worship you jesus we glorify you jesus your name is worthy to be praised in nepal in singapore in china in india god you will be glorified hallelujah and that's why we've come together today we've come today to breathe out the name of jesus through worship we've come to hear from the word of god you know who the word of god is it's jesus in the beginning was the word and the word was with god so jesus we're all about you today Lord we know that we've got problems Lord we know we have issues Lord we know we need tissues but we need you more than we need our issues because Jesus your name heals and while my heart is hurting Jesus saying your name heals me My flesh doesn't feel good right now. My heart doesn't feel good right now. But Jesus, I'm going to come to church today and I'm going to breathe the name of Jesus because I'm going to put you into this atmosphere because your name is going to heal because Jehovah Rapha heals. And that's the God we serve today. So the moment you started praising him, Heaven started raining down the Bible says that he inhabits our praises. So when you began to start opening your mouth let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So I'm going to say so. I'm going to praise so. I'm going to lift up holy hands unto the Lord. Listen while there are firecrackers going on this week all over the world and or all over North America there is going to be firecrackers right here this morning. because the fire of God is going to meet with us and we're going to say hallelujah Jesus thank you for reminding us that where true freedom comes it comes from you because you are almighty oh you are sovereign lord you are gracious indeed you are grace you are mercy you are love you you are awesome you are amazing Jesus says just 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 keep worshiping me Just keep worshiping me. That's what it's all about and I'm grateful today that I get to worship with you because we our spirits agree with one another. My spirit bears witness with your spirit because today we're expecting God to do something in our midst. Lean over you to to your neighbor and say, "I'm expecting God today." You tell him like you mean it and you say, "I'm expecting God today." Because that is what's going to happen today. Because when we gather together in his name in his name you are sitting right next to the Holy Spirit of God you are you are sitting right next to the Holy Spirit of God oh he lives inside you but he's right next to you right now you might need an encouragement today you might need a little extra pep in your step today my boys went over to Dan Patnold's house and we're staying with them over the weekend and the boys went downstairs we went to the lake yesterday and had a wonderful time of just relaxing and fellowshipping and they saw a ping pong table well you know Asians get happy when they see ping pong tables come on you know hey i ain't gonna lie okay it's the truth 
I get a little happy myself, but in Asia, we don't call it ping pong table because you just don't go around saying your brother's name everywhere you go. <laughs> don't you laugh. That's, that's offensive that you laughed. That, I am offended right now. It's okay for me to say that, but it's not okay for you to laugh at that. So my boy said, Dad, can we go play ping pong? And I about looked at them. Look, I know you're half white and half Asian, but don't call out your uncle's name, okay? In vain. And, um, but they got excited because they wanted to play ping pong. And uh, man, are we, do you ever just get excited about stuff? I want you to get excited about what the Holy Spirit's going to do. I want you to get excited about what God's going to do for you today. Because God is right here. I won't, I, I won't even know your needs. I won't even know what, you, what, what hurts and what pains you have. But I love it that this is a church family that just loves, no matter what mess, because the Messiah is right here to take all of our mess in his beautiful grace. You know, grace is unmerited favor, which means that there's nothing you can do to mess up God's love for you. He loves you unconditionally, and we can't even fathom that because we're like, but I messed up, God, and then God just continues to love on you, and you, it messes you up even more because you, you have a limitation of how much God can love you. You ever get that way? I do. I get that way. But in the beauty of, our, of, of, of these ashes, and he takes these ashes and he turns it into beauty. Oh, while it's dark during that midnight hour, joy comes in the morning. I was thinking about that word morning, and I couldn't help spelling it a different way. Joy comes in the M-O-R-N-I-N-G, but I thought so often sometimes you just need to mourn M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. And let those tears flow. Let God have those tears, even though it hurts, even though you don't think about when that joy is going to come. But joy will come in the morning, not in a problem-solving. Joy comes in the morning because Jesus is your joy. Because the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Jesus, I'm weak right now. I need a little encouragement right now. I can't do this. God, I, I need you to spot me. And Jesus is right there. That's how amazing God is. That's the beauty of his majesty. That's the glory of God at, at work in our lives. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. I want to talk to you about this topic he oft refreshed me. He oft refreshed me. When you look up the word refreshing in the Bible, what does it mean to you? If you look it up in the dictionary, it means a little different than the word that we would assume it to be. What does it mean to refresh someone? Well, if you look it up in Merriam's, Merriam Webster's dictionary, it's a, oftentimes it's referred to as a verb or an adverb. It's to restore strength and uh, animation or to revive someone. That's what you're doing. You're restoring strength. You're refreshing them by reviving them. It also means to freshen up, basically to renovate. It means to restore, to maintain by renewing supply or to replenish, if you will. It means to run water over, to restore water too. When something is dry, do you feel a little dry at times? Today, do you feel a little dry? I was reading my Bible about a month ago and I was reading in Genesis and Genesis talks about um, Moses going into the desert for 40 years. God had to take Moses out of the desert and he had to, or Moses out of Egypt and had to send him to the desert. And I kept, it kept saying desert, desert, wilderness, desert, wilderness. And, and God led the children of Israel into the wilderness and into the desert. And uh, for some reason, the Holy Spirit of God just impressed upon me to try to define that a little better and try to understand it a little better. So I looked it up in the Hebrew 
And when I looked it up in the Hebrew, the word was midbar, M-I-D-B-A-R. And I said, well, I got to understand what midbar means. And so I went to a Hebrew English dictionary and I went and I looked up midbar and it meant not desert. The word desert was midbar. Midbar was not desert the way we think of desert to be. A dry, hot, airy, deserted uh, place that, is, that nobody wants to live in. Nothing grows in it. But the word midbar actually meant the place where God speaks. The place where you don't hear anything else but God. And I thought, wait a minute, God. All this time, in my English translation, I just thought that Moses had to spend 40 years in the backside of the desert. But actually, you sent him to the desert so you can speak to him? So that you can reveal yourself out of a fiery bush? That wasn't even burning, but the glory of God was being revealed and God, uh, God spoke to Moses. So you mean to say that all that time, the children of Israel were not going to a place where they were being abandoned. They were going to a place where they needed to hear God before they can discover their destiny. And that changed the way I read my Bible and understood desert. Because there are going to be seasons in your life where you're going to feel like you're in a desert, where it's completely dry, when things around you, relationships are starting to become dry, when you feel a little restless, like, I don't belong here anymore, I belong somewhere else, but, and you're just so, your, your spirit is so agitated within you, and you just got to move on, and God takes you to a journey, and that journey is not to send you somewhere where you're outcasted and forgotten and neglected, but there in that desert, his spirit is trying to minister to you. He is trying to Speak to you. So while you're in that desert, remember that the Holy Spirit of God was trying to reveal himself in his direction because Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Here, follow this cloud during the day. Follow me. And then at nighttime, he still hasn't abandoned you yet. There is a pillar of cloud or a pillar of fire by night. You need food, let me give you not just manna, but I will give you new manna every single day to remind you of my grace. You need water, I'll flow to you streams of living water. You need a leader, I've sent to you Moses. I've sent to you a man of God to lead you to your destiny. You're you're not being abandoned. You're not being neglected. You're not just going around in circles. It's because you are not hearing the voice of God. So you need to lean in today and let the Holy Spirit of God say, God, if I'm in a desert right now, I need your spirit to speak to me because if desert means midbar, I need your spirit to speak to me right now. Refresh me, oh God, before Jesus entered into his, his early ministry. He prayed and he fasted in the desert for 40 days. And there he communed with the Holy Father before he went out to do his ministry. It was 40 days and 40 nights that it was raining. And God was trying to reveal himself to the earth. Deuteronomy 32 says, have you ever heard the voice of God? Today, I hope that you can hear the voice of God. I want you to take your attention to the book of 1 Timothy. That's where we'll be. And leave your hand there. 1 Timothy chapter number 1, verse number 16 through 18 is where we'll be. I love it. 1 Timothy 1, 16 spells it out. He oft refresh me. The Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus. I thought Chanta was bad. (laughs) For he oft refreshed me, and he was not ashamed of my chain. This is Paul writing a letter now 
to Timothy and he says, I want you to send me a friend of mine. His name is Onesiphorus. I want you to send him to me. And this Onesiphorus, he is an encourager in the Lord. And I want to talk to you about that today. He offered fresh me because God is going to divinely use relationships in your life to refresh you. The Holy Spirit of God is going to refresh you. The Bible says in Proverbs 17, 17, it says, A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. You ever have one of those friends that has stuck with you through thick and thin? I've got that in your pastor. I've got that in several people. They just love you no matter what. They show grace no matter what. They show mercy no matter what. Because a friend loves at all times. And that's the friend we have in Jesus. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. He loves us at all times. And he is not, he hasn't abandoned us during our time in the desert. He's right there to minister to us. Proverbs 18, 24 says, A man that has friends must show himself friendly. And there's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Are you one of those type of friends that you stick closer than a brother. You don't leave when things are hard and difficult. You're not ashamed when things, when they are just human because that's all we are at our best. We're still human. Proverbs 27 verse 6 says, Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Paul was writing this letter, The Lord give mercy to the house of Onesiphorus, For he oft refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. Verse 17. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. Verse number 18. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in the day, in that day. And in how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, thou knowest very well. I want to give you three things of what this refreshing friend did. And I want you to think about the Lord Jesus Christ as your friend. And I want the Lord to maybe utilize you to be a refreshing friend to someone else and minister to them. And maybe allow that refreshing friend to minister to you. Because if somebody in the body, in the body of Christ, as Pastor Bob says, I've got an itch I need that arm and that finger and that hand to do its job. Thanks. Man, that felt good. My wife will often ask me to give her a scratch on her back. because she. And while I'm there, she'll say a little harder. And so I scratch a little harder and I don't have long nails. And so she'll just say a little harder. Ah, that feels good. My son Carter, sometimes I'll scratch his little belly like a little puppy. And sometimes his foot starts kicking a little bit and, and he just feels good. It feels good to give someone a scratch when they need it. It feels good when, when you got a little itch, when you got a little pain and someone's giving it to you. That's what is so refreshing about it. When you're lonely and you've got no one else and you're like, I'll use anything and everything. If some video camera was spying out on you, what in the world is he doing? Leave me alone. I'm just refreshing myself. (laughs) This Onesiphorus got a couple of verses in the Bible by a godly man because he refreshed a friend. Number one, I want you to see what this refreshing friend does. First of all, he had a consistent concern. He had a consistent concern. 1 Timothy 1 verse 16 says, I want you to read these words with me. Ready, begin. For he oft refreshed me. It didn't say he he, he called me once. It didn't say he sent me an email once. It didn't say he sent me a text message once. It didn't say that once a year when Facebook reminds me that it's your birthday, I'm like, oh, man, if he knows we're friends and all that, so I got to be like, happy birthday, bro. And then you're like, after everything's all done, hope he got my message with the 1,000 other people. No, he's that refreshing friend that picks up the phone and he says, hey, man, how you doing? Happy birthday. By the way, today is Karen Patnode's birthday. 
call her today. You could be refreshing and encouraging to her today. But are you one of those consistent, concerning friends where it's not just like, yeah, it's about that time of the year. We, we don't really ever see each other, talk to each other, but I'm going to go ahead and send him happy birthday right now. I get messages from this church often. I get encouraging Facebook messages and text messages because that's what refreshing friends do. They have a consistent concern. And as a missionary uh, out of, uh, that, that, that's partnered with this church, we've got to have a partnership that says, hey, how are things going? And guess what? Your pastor has done that for me. The elders have done that for me. Be, there are people in this church like Ivan Baker and others that have sent me encouraging messages that have consistent concern. When my wife was having her seizure, People reached out. We're praying for you. We love you. How's Susan doing? That is a consistent concern. Not one of those friends, hey, um, so uh, uh, how are things going? You're in like, um, yeah, I've been praying for you. You're like uh, in uh, China, right? That's it. You're in China. When you have a consistent concern, you know what's going on. You know that Marion Cafe, Cafe Marion, and you know Roxanne. And you say, Roxanne, thanks for encouraging me. And Roxanne says, thanks, Chant, I'm praying for you too. And we're praying for one another. Bear you one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Because when friends have a consistent concern, it's not one of those, hey man, I'm praying for you, buddy. That, that, wasn't, that wasn't Paul's relationship with Onesiphorus, and that wasn't Onesiphorus' relationship with Paul. Send word to Onesiphorus, for he oft, he consistently had a concern for my well-being because he knew I would be out there in Galatia and Ephesus and in Rome, and he knew that I would be in a place where I would be troubled and I would preach the gospel and they may stone me. Not, not that I would get stoned like, dude, I'm getting stoned, but like they would stone me. <laughs> Medical marijuana, I got to make sure that's straight with a lot of you, okay? It's coming around America. Different states are having it, five, six states now, and by that time, you know, we may be doing a different kind of stoning that's not in the Bible, okay? But they wanted to make sure. Paul, are you okay? Are you hurting? Are you need anything? How's your finances? How? Well, no, never mind. You don't have a wife. <laughs> I'm praying for you that you do, Paul. <laughs> I had a consistent concern. I had a friend. We, it was so funny. We had a prayer meeting at a, at a church one time. And someone raised their hand and said, um, I need you to pray for my friend. Uh, he's, um, ah, I forgot his name. <laughs> And to this day, we still laugh about it, especially when I see that friend. I'll say, so hey, uh, you still praying for that friend? What's his name again? <laughs> for about one minute, he says, ah, oh, I, I just can't remember his name. I hope you can remember that friend's name that you're praying for. Whoever it was that, as Pastor was talking earlier, who, who's that person across the room? Pray for them that... that that you would, you would get with them today and say, hey, man, I, God put you on my heart, and I'm praying for you. I don't know what's going on, but if there's anything you need, I want you to know I, I want to pray with you about this. He had a consistent concern. He refreshed me. For he oft refreshed me. I love the word oft, often. For he often refreshed me. We don't speak, you know, old English anymore, but we use the word often. Or some people often, some people, if you're like Ebonics, you know, he'd he be doing it all the time, yo, you know, that's, he'd get up all up, he'd be calling me every single day, my, he's hitting my number. No, this is a consistent concern. Hey, boo, what's up? It's your boy. What up, dog? This guy, if he was one of those guys, he was like that. Yo, it's your boy, what up? It's me, your Asian brother. Yep, I wasn't on the family Christmas card, but you know, we brothers. You white and everything, but you know, we, we serve the same father. He's our heavenly father, so we brothers. 
That's, I'm going to get in Pastor Bob's next Christmas card. We're taking, we are taking a family photo this week. I know it's only July. Christmas is going to come around, and it's going to go out to all of uh, McDowell County, and people be like, what? Who is that? Did you adopt someone? Ooh, he's so cute. Look at his eyes. They're like slanted. Ooh, I've always wanted one of those. <laughs> Where can I get one of those? <laughs> you talk to Peter and Abby. They, they live in China. They'll work out a deal with you. <laughs> they got a lot of stuff. You know, they brought, they have, they're doing some fundraising right now. So they're trying to raise some funds. And so the way they're doing it, they don't have Nikes with them. You know, they're from China. So they brought with them some Mikeys. <laughs> so if you want, you know, not the real deal, 50% off, talk to them. After the service, they got Mikeys in their trunk. They don't have any Pumas, but they got lots of Cougars. It's in their trunk. No, no Reeboks, but they got lots of Weeboks. And that's not because he stutters a little bit or he has a little lisp, but it's because they don't sell the real thing. It ain't authentic, all right? They don't have any coaches over there in China. They have a lot of captains and referees, but no coaches. I love it. We bring back stuff with us all the time, and I'm, get, I'm so happy. I'm going to be like giving people some new Mikeys, and people are like, ooh, thank you for these. These are Mikeys? What is that? It's from China. Um, my, my boys make it. We work them hard early. We got to raise funds. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. I know he's only seven, but boy, you, your fingers, your little fingers need to thread those things. All right, we're getting off track here. Consistent concern. We got, it's all right to laugh in church, amen? We have fun. Your pastor cracks me up, and that's not just because, you know, he's a cracker, but because he, no, 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 I wasn't, I promise you, no, I'm serious. I wasn't trying to be racist or called names. And if you got offended, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I was referring to one who cracks, right? Er, you know, crack er. That's what I meant, not the other way. I promise. One who cracks. He, he's a crack, he, he, he makes me laugh. I love being around him. He refreshes me because, you know, he's a cracker, one who makes people crack up. I'm serious. Y'all still looking at me like I'm being racist, okay? I'm not. I married one of you. <laughs> I can prove it. I love you. We tight. He had a consistent concern. Do you and I have consistent concern for people? Or we have one of those like generic ones? Because you know, people can see through the genericness. People can see through your lack of sincerity. They felt your cold handshake, your pat in the back. I'm praying for you, brother. Carry my Bible. I'm praying for you. Hey, bro, happy birthday. Love you. Praying for you. They knew if it was a real compassionate, consistent concern, they saw right through it. That's why a brother is born for all the good times. Is that right? We have good times together. No, no. When everybody walks out, that's the name that walks in. That's the, that's the friend that walks in because they always have had a very consistent concern for me. So why don't you go ahead and practice that this week and bear somebody's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Number two, I want you to notice that Onesiphorus, the refreshing friend, had, he was willing to, to risk some things. He was willing to risk ridicule. You say, what do you mean by that? You go through here, and verse 16 says, 
for he oft refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. Yep, Paul back then was like, yo, this is off the chain. I am in prison, but it ain't the same chain that everyone's talking about nowadays. Young people are, they're using words and slangs. I'm, I'm still trying to catch up with my son and trying to understand, you know, what is cool, what is dope, what is hip, what is off the hizzy, and what is off the chain. Paul was using it back then. He was, he was hip back then. He's like saying, listen, this guy was not ashamed of my chain. He was, he was in it. He was with me. He went all the way while I was sitting in prison. You know, it's, it's pretty embarrassing to visit somebody who's in prison when, you know, they don't have anything to give. They're stuck. They're behind bars. And they may not be in a physical, literal bar right now in a prison, but you've got that friend that's behind bars, metaphorically speaking who feels like they've been trapped in a room of emotional wear and tear where everyone has abandoned them and they themselves have put themselves behind this room even, quite possibly. And it's the middle of the night and they're still crying and wondering who's going to visit me. Who even knows that I'm here? Who even knows that I'm hurting? Who even cares enough to come and speak a word to me? It's not like I can go into that prison and put my arms around you. There's something in between us, but Onisiphorus, even though there was something between us, he wasn't ashamed to come. You ever have one of those friends when they become famous and all of a sudden everybody out of the woodworks, yep, I went to high school with them. I went to junior high with them. Actually, we were in the same nursery. We played kickball together. We played dodgeball together. It's not one of those. This guy was with him all the way through of Paul's ministry. While you're in prison, Paul, I am going to go and find you because I'm not ashamed of you. I'm not just your best friend when you're amazing, when everything's all right. I'm also your biffle, even when things are hurting. I am that guy. Onesiphorus, Paul, when you don't have another BFF, let me your B, also be your BFL, best friends for life. Your Biffle, Morgan Ritter. I'll hook you up. Morgan's been calling the Hamiltons, cute little baby. I love him. I carried around the, him the other day. We were going through a Cracker Barrel, and I walked through, and oh no, we were at a roadhouse down in Asheville, and I stopped at a couple's table, an elderly couple, and I said, you won't believe he's mine. He looks just like me, doesn't he? He takes after his mother. They're, Morgan's been calling them Biffle, best friends for life. Do you have one of these? You're not ashamed? We, we're brothers, we're sisters, we're best friends for life, no matter what, not just when things are good, because everyone can be best friends with everyone when things are good. But when things are down in the dumps, when no one understands my pain, when no, one, no one's willing to, you know, to just let me talk it out, I've got that friend. Onesiphorus, you are not ashamed of my chain because you are, you are willing to risk the ridicule. There have been friends that may have walked out on you. I know what that's like. We were in Singapore and we had friends that walked out on us. But then your pastor was willing to take the risk of ridicule for me. And Chant, I'm, I'm going to pray for you, buddy. I'm your friend no matter what. God put you in my life. And a friend sticketh closer than a brother. Do you have that? Do you have somebody in your life like that? Do you need to be that person for someone else? Thirdly, lastly, 
I want you to notice that Onesiphorus had tenacity in the task. That's what refreshing friends do. Refreshing friends have tenacity in the task. What is amazing in the book of 2 Timothy verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 16 through 18, verse number 17 explains how Onesiphorus had the tenacity in the task. It says, but when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and he found me. You got to understand that Rome was a very big place. Singapore is a small country, but it's got nearly 7 million people. You go visit the Hamiltons in China, and you are going to have a hard time because everybody looks the same. It's a big place. Lots of people. Where do I go? Where do I start? They said that they live in a country... They live in this particular city, and I went to this particular city. I remember the first time Susan and I stepped out of the country, we went to go find my dad. I think I've shared with you the story, but many of you who have not heard me share the story. In 2005, I had grown up never knowing my dad, didn't know his name, haven't ever seen a photo of my dad. I've never been able to really talk about him. I've asked my mother one time when I was a teenager, Mom, tell me a little bit about my dad. My mom turned her face away from me, and she just wept uncontrollably because I knew it was a difficult subject for my mother to talk about. Fast forward 10, 12 years later, I receive a phone call and that phone call was a man who spoke the Cambodian language, the Khmer language, and he said in so many words, this is your daddy. I'm calling you from Cambodia. I've been looking all over for you. If it, this is really you, this is really your dad. I'm crying, I'm sobbing. At the end of our conversation, he says, would you come to Cambodia? If you do, come to this market Come to this particular stall. Ask for this particular person. And then they'll lead you to this particular block. And you're going to go down this dirt road. And you're going to find this tree and this rock. And you're going to turn this way and keep walking so many kilometers. I'm from America. I don't know how many kilometers are. <laughs> we went. Spent day number one. No dad. Hot, sweltering Cambodian heat. Day number two, no dad. Day number three, no dad. Day number four, no dad. Day number five, I was discouraged. And I needed to have a refreshing friend, and my wife was that refreshing friend. She said, baby, we need to go and just clear your mind and, and your heart a little bit. It's all right. God's gonna, God didn't bring you all the way over here for nothing. You'll find your daddy. And so we went two, hour, uh, we went two days to a to a city called Siem Reap in Angkor Wat. And we went there, spent two nights. We came back. We checked into our hotel. The man at the front desk, we walked a little closer and he waved a little piece of paper and he said, you're Chantha Chim, aren't you? I said, yes, I am. How did you know? And he said, well, your dad has left the paper here that says, if a Cambodian man and an American girl comes, that's my son and daughter-in-law, call me and I'll give you a reward. Called my dad, got to speak to him for the second time. And I got to meet my dad for the very first time in 2005. We had to have tenacity in the task because I was discouraged. If you've ever been to a third world country looking for a house with no address system and be like, you my daddy, you my daddy, I need... You know, I need Jerry Springer and to say, I need paternity tests. I need to know who my daddy is, all right? Ooh, you have the same eyes like I do? Yeah, they all do. <laughs> my wife was that refreshing friend who didn't just say, yeah, we're not going to find him. I don't even know why we came. I don't know why we bothered. We shouldn't have because you're more discouraged right now than when we started. She was that refreshing friend who said, baby, it's going to be all right. God's got this. And can I tell you something today? He is faithful. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. Because he knows the plans he has for you. He doesn't change. Lo, I am 
with you. Or some of you say it like me, with you. He is with you. He's never going to leave you. He is faithful. And he's got tenacity in the task. He's not going to give up on you. Oh, no. He's never going to give up. He's never going to let you go. His grace is running towards you when everybody else is running away from you. They're looking at you like you are messed up. I can't believe you did it. I've got to separate myself. I've got to keep a distance, but I'm walking in when everyone else is walking out. I want to be like the Lord Jesus who does that all the time. He is faithful. He's got tenacity in the task. He is always with you. He'll never leave you. He's going to be Onesiphorus for you. And this is a beautiful picture of our relationship with, with our forever friend who is there to refresh us. You need a little splash of water in your desert right now? He's going to refresh you because that's one of the definitions of refreshing. You need someone to recharge you? That is the definition of refresh. He's, he's got this. He's going to recharge you. Everything a little messed up? You, little, you, you have a little hurricane that came through? You got a little typhoon that came through? You got a little fire that damaged quite a, quite a bit of things? He came here to renovate. That's part of the word refresh. He's right there. He's here to encourage you, and you and I need to just say, Jesus, thank you for being that refreshing friend, and I want to be like you because I was created in your image, and you have called me unto yourself, and you want to work through me. Your glory wants to work through me, not just in me. Because the grace of God, who has done the messy work of renovating and refreshing and restoring and rejuvenating all that stuff that's been ugly and, 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 and messed up in our lives, now he says, go ahead and give it to someone else. And you go ahead and be Onesiphorus for someone else. Can you imagine if you and I and the members of this church right now decided right now we were all going to be Onesiphorus. We were all going to be like the Lord Jesus Christ and go be that refreshing friend for someone outside this room as well as the people inside of this room. How much McDowell county can be impacted with the gospel that's what christianity is all about that's how we point people to the lord jesus we refresh them because he is the living water and they that drink from him they will never run dry they will never be thirsty they will often be refreshed because the Holy Spirit is that constant waterfall flowing through us, regenerating us, hydrating us, working in us. And the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, he that watereth himself also shall be watered. Go ahead. Go encourage someone else because you're going to need that encouragement. You just keep giving it. Because the Holy Spirit of God is going to keep giving it to you as you keep giving it to someone else, as you keep giving it to someone else. Holy Spirit keeps giving it to you and keeps refreshing you. That's what it means to be a refreshing friend. Would you do that today? I want to tell you something because if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ today, if you do not know that heaven can be your home and that God loves you and he wants to be your forever refreshing friend, Today is the day that you can say, Jesus, I accept you into my life. I want you, to, I, I want you to clean up the mess that I've got in my life, and I give it over to you. Redeem me from my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Take me to heaven and, and do a regeneration work, a, for a refreshing work in my life today. He'll do that for you today. And there's somebody today that needs to have Jesus to be your refreshing friend today. Others of you just need to be a refreshing friend to someone. And if this church can do that, we'll turn this state upside down for the glory of God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Father, Abba, you are mighty, mighty to reign, mighty to save mighty to heal, mighty to refresh. 
Spirit of the living God flow through this place right now. Have your perfect way. Somebody today needs to begin a relationship with you. They need to know that they came to hear this message. They didn't want to get up today. Today's the weekend. Today they wanted to be out on the lake. Today they wanted to go out for a picnic. Today they wanted to just chill. But Lord, your spirit woke them and brought them to this place so that they can hear a refreshing message so that they can receive Jesus Christ as their personal Savior today. They've been playing church. They've been running. They've been playing games. But today, they want to give their life over to you. There's somebody today, and no one is looking around. I want you to know it's between you and God. But I want to be a refreshing friend to you right now, and I want to pray for you. And church members, Christians, would you just pray for that person who needs Jesus Christ right now? Can I ask you this question? If you were to die today, do you know if you would even go to heaven or do you have doubts? If you have doubts, today can be the day that you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior right now. I want to pray for you. I won't embarrass you. I won't call you out by name. I don't even know your name. But I, I, I won't ask you to come, come up here and join me on stage or say a word. I just want to pray for you as you lift up your hand. If today you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior today, would you lift up your hand so I can pray for you? Is there anybody like that today? Come on. If it's, if it's you, just lift up your hand and let me pray for you. Is there anybody like that? Wave it at me, would you? Hallelujah right here. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this woman who has raised her hand. Is there anybody else who will will not be embarrassed or ashamed because they're they're willing to risk the ridicule? There is no ridicule here. There's only love here. Is there anybody else like that? There's another one in the back. Hallelujah, man. Is there anybody else? I want Jesus Christ right here. Two hands are lifted. Is that it? Anybody else? Lift it up. I'll just pray for you. Right there in the back. Hallelujah. Three people. Holy Spirit's going. He's moving and he's knocking on your your heart's door right now. Hey, are you willing to risk the ridicule? I'm willing to risk it all. I died for you. I love you. I came from heaven to earth to redeem you, to give you new life in Jesus Christ. That's what he says. Come on. Is there one more? Three. Is there one more person that says, I'm willing to raise my hand and accept Jesus Christ as my, I'm willing to risk the ridicule and live my life. I will follow. I will follow what he's doing in my heart right now. Here's my hand. Preacher, here's my hand. Go ahead and lift it up. Go ahead and lift it up. While the rest of us are praying still, would those three people that raise their hand, would you do me the honor of just standing to your feet so I can, I can pray for you right now? Thank you, ma'am. God, that's a bold faith. I love you. I don't even know you, but I love you in, in the Lord. There was a man that raised, raised his hand back there. There's a couple right here. There's four. There's five. Oh, how beautiful. How beautiful. The number five, if you ever see the number five in the Bible, the number five is the number of grace. And grace is at work right now. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you are at work right now. Would those five people just stand to your feet still? And I want, I want to lead you in a, in a prayer, but I want you to find one of the pastors Later on, Pastor Ivan and Pastor Bob and others, my sister Tammy, I want you to just just talk to them sometime today. Would, would, Would the five people stand back up again? No one else looking around, please, for these five people. These are my brothers and sisters in Christ right now. Hallelujah. Come on. I want you to pray this in your heart right now. And you deal you deal with it as God leads you. But I want to lead you in a prayer because today is the day of salvation. And we are rejoicing in the Lord with what God did. I am astounded. I prayed, I prayed last night, I prayed this week, God, would you please allow me to see the Holy Spirit move in this place and show yourself, 
And today he did by showing me the number five in the redeemed work of grace at Nebo Crossing. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, but please forgive me of all my sins, of all the mess that I've made, and come into my heart and be my forever friend. Be my savior. Today, I ask you to save me. Take me to heaven when I die. I believe in you. And the best that I know how, with your Holy Spirit help, I want to live my life after you. I'm going to mess up sometimes, but thank you for loving me anyways, even in my mess ups, because you've, you're going to forgive me as you already have forgiven me of all my sins. Today, I want to begin that relationship with you, Jesus. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Keep your heads bowed and eyes closed. You may sit down. Thank you. I cannot wait to give you a hug if you'll allow me. I want to give you a hug from the Holy Spirit of God. He's giving you one right now, but physically I want to... I want to wrap my arms around you to let you know how much God loves you. And the church family here, let them. Let them do that as well because we're just a bunch of messed up people that are trying to live a life of grace. We're all in this together. Father, your people need to be encouraged today. Lord, they need to know that they have been free and not just free, they have been free indeed, that you have redeemed them, that you have given them a new life in Jesus Christ. And Father, today, today I pray that they would be encouraged and that, Lord, they would desire to go and encourage someone else. And may this church just constantly be a refreshing water to somebody that is dry. And may we take the Holy Spirit of God with us and just pour your words out and be a refreshing because it is not us. It is your word that heals. It is your word that redeems. It is your word when we declare in the name of Jesus that you refresh and you restore and you renovate and you redeem to do an amazing work in McDowell County and in North Carolina. God, I pray that as we are all in, in this new campaign, capital campaign, as we go into a, a new venture of faith, God, I pray that this would be a people that, Lord, we know what it was like to be refreshed by the Holy Spirit of God, and we know that there are people in McDowell County that still need to, the Lord Jesus Christ, and they need to be refreshed, and we're not going to stop. We're going to keep on keeping on. We're going to pour streams of living water. We're going to give out water. It's free. Holy Spirit of God, I pray that this church would be a church that is replenished, recharged, rejuvenated, and refreshing, and we can do that likewise to everyone else because of what you have done in our lives. Jesus, you are amazing. And all glory to you and the Father above and the Holy Spirit for how you have orchestrated every song to glorify your name. It's your name that we celebrate today. And it's in your name that these are now brothers and sisters in Christ. And we rejoice with our, with our five new brothers and sisters in Christ. I am ecstatic, Pastor Bob. Praise the Lord. I just want to say, as pastor of this church, to the five that were saved this morning, we love you, and you need to reveal yourself to someone that you're comfortable doing that with so that we can walk this journey with you. Um, I want to ask uh, my staff to stand. I've got Ivan here. I've got Tammy, my wife, also on staff here. Uh, Jeff Moore, I see here. We have several staff out of town. Roger's out of town. There's Kristen at the back door. Uh, and then elders, if you would stand, the elders of our church that are here. We got Rick Long back here. Are you the only one in here? Is everybody else out of town? No wonder the Spirit moved this morning. Just kidding. Uh, we love you, and we want to get to know who you are.
Maybe we already know you. Maybe it's someone that's been a member here for a long time. Don't be ashamed. Come let us know. We want to walk this out with you. We care about you. We need to make a couple quick announcements. We're going to get you out of here.